Hello, everybody. Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome, one and all. Yes, 11 out of 32 already, and we are just getting started. So today we find ourselves on the poop deck. Uh, no, this is not the poop deck. This is actually like the aft or fore deck or something uh, kind of adjacent to the uh, foxhole over there, which, yeah, you know. Oh, hey, uh, you remember this guy. Uh, you'll recognize him when we talk to him. This handsome sailor entertains the many children on the cruise. The mustache will be a dead giveaway. Oh, I'm the handsome sailor who entertains the many children on this cruise. I think but that's Neil also. I haven't seen a single child anywhere. That's because this game is too dirty for kids. So I believe that this is our Kenny analog. Uh, from, I think he's been in every single game so far. So yeah, this is Kenny, but for some reason they call him Rod in this one. I don't quite get it, but whatever. So exactly what is it you do? Well, I make balloon animals. Say, do you want one? Hmm, not really. I'll consider that a yes. Here you go. <laughs> Look! It's Hooty the Owl! But that doesn't look like that. Well, it does to me. Yeah, well, uh, y you can keep it, okay? Hey, I recognize you. Have we met? Yeah, you're that guy from the bar in Larry One. Am not. Yeah, you were that psycho barber on the airplane in Larry Two. Was not! And you were Chief Kenny Wawa on Nun Tonight Island in Larry 3. Was not! And you hit all the floppy disks from Larry 4. Did not! Yeah, and in Larry 5, you were that geek on the boardwalk. Was not! Yeah, and in Larry 6, you were in the pool floating on that inflatable pussy. How was that? No, not me! How about another balloon animal? Eh, whatever. <laughs> I just love how this entire conspiracy over the course of six games is just like, yeah, whatever, okay. Oh, no, no, don't hold that there. Kenny, or Rod, whoever you are. Look, it's Godzilla. Look, it's Mothra. Look, they're fighting. <laughs> If you ever wanted a summation of what I feel like as an entertainer, there it is right there. So that's Rod. I don't think he actually does anything else in the game, and I always used to think that his shorts had pot leaves on them, which I thought was really cool. Love the topiaries, by the way. The kumquat tree is an evergreen shrub with beautiful, sweet-scented white flowers, cultivated for its small orange-yellow citrus fruit, which is commonly eaten fresh or in preserves, but rarely in quiche. And this is the first one you've ever seen that's been sculpted into a sheep shape. Quickly, repeat after me. Sheep shape, sheep shape, sheep shape. Sheep shape, sheep shape, sheep shape, sheep shape, sheep shape, sheep shape, sheep shape. Come on, Neil, challenge me. I almost called you Rod. Sorry. I actually do have to look up if this actually was Neil. Yeah, yeah, he sure is. He's also Mr. Boning, who we haven't met yet. And he's actually the announcer who pops up. I never made that connection. Good on you, Neil. And we were actually just talking about Kevin Michael Richardson, like, last night. We watched a video with him doing his best Shatner impersonation for, uh, what was it, the 50th or 60th anniversary of Star Trek? I don't know how long it's been around, but for a long time. So he's Johnson, the bartender who will meet Judge Graham, uh, Judge Paul. Yeah, I think these are the, the celebrity chefs. Let's go talk to them now. Wait, I learned something new. Not again. Rod, just let me go. So you'll notice, here we are, so the captain's cook-off is where we need to be, and I think we can use this to zip right over there, but it's unnecessary, as we are here right now anyway! A poem by Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. I've never seen an electric uvula. I never hope to see one. I can tell you anyhow 
I'd rather see than be one. If there's not a band out there in the world called Electric Uvula, then something is wrong with society as a whole. So we'll recognize a few of these celebrity chefs. Now, this is obviously Julia Child, uh, who is Judge Julia. Um, this guy was like the frugal chef, I think his name was. Judge Graham. Nah, screw it. I can't remember. I, I think that's who it was. He was a celebrity chef. And then this is Paul Prudhomme, uh, who is sort of the, the Creole-esque uh, creator of many fine dishes. Hello. Oh, I can just look at the competition itself. This is where those few vying for the Thaisman Trophy and unfortunate enough to be randomly selected for the cook-off competition must present their concoctions to a distinguished panel of judges. Judge Julia has never met a dessert she didn't like, or a quiche, or a souffle, or a whatever. They really mention the word quiche a lot, so it's almost like it's trying to hint you into something. Judge Graham specializes in food for those who want to lower their intake of fat and taste. Oh man, topical, awful, slams. Judge Paul is obviously fond of food. His own, his competitors, anyone's. Why are they being so mean to these chefs? I feel so bad for them. Hello, Judge Julia. Oh, yes, darling. I know you'd love to talk to me, but the judges here are forbidden from fraternizing with the prisoners. Oh, I mean contestants. Oh, we never enter into idle conversation with ordinary people. We're brought here at great expense, you know. Just to judge, never associate. No, goodness, no. <laughs> there he is, and this is, uh, this is him as well. There ain't nothing you're gonna do that'll make me change anything about my opinion of your cooking. I don't even care if I haven't tasted it. I still know my cooking's best. Go on! Go on, yeah. get on out of here, you slithering varmint! Alright, thanks to the fast travel system. Oh, I love it. I just love that you can just go wherever you want. Uh, let's see, there's the clothing optional pool we haven't been to yet, the ballroom, there's the hold. Oh, we haven't even been to our room yet. Let's go check out our digs. You insert your key card into the slot with great anticipation. What will your special suite be like? Well, it is spacious. Oh, I love the, the mechanized oars. Nice touch. Oh, man, if only I remembered what those smelled like. Now, there's there's a lot we can do around here. And uh, in this game, because the uh, everything is sort of painted onto the backdrop, anything that's interactable is sort of, it, it sticks out like a store's thumb. St speaking of sticking out, speaking of messing Your up your lines. Your attention, please. Yeah. Don and Mark have just won the synchronized skinny dipping portion of the competition. Yeah, baby. All right, so grab everything that's not nailed down. It's the King Swayze way, so this toilet paper looks like it needs taken. Thank you. Didn't even want to bother animating that. All right, then we'll take this little spray can of whatever it is. Go. And one thing I've learned throughout the entire uh, Larry series is always look at your inventory because there's always clues about what needs to be done. The ship's toilet paper is as rough as a cob. Never really heard that saying before, but rough as a cop. So I think that's saying that uh, the toilet paper can be used as some sort of uh, like sandpaper, I think. And then what is this aerosol? Silicone lubricant. Your favorite brand of silicone lubricant is Greased Pig brand. I asked for it by name. <laughs> I don't know. Just something, something about this game just makes me happy. I don't even know what it is. Uh, I believe we could also take ourselves a little bit of a nap, but it never works. Time for a little shut eye. Well, calm seas. Ow. 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 Ah. Ow. <laughs> and this just keeps going on. And oh. until you click out of it, this will go on eternally. Oh. Just sleep on the other side of the cot. Move your pillow over there. And it only drips on you when you're laying on it. 
This game hates you. Can I take my pillow? You've been provided with the finest in army surplus cots. Well, that's good. Not that good. It's from the Uzbekistan army, and the only reason it's surplus is because sleeping on it is less comfortable than sleeping on frozen tundra. Oh, oh. I also wonder if you get any points for using the turlet. Uh, let's see. Other... Well, I guess there's no way around it. We have to type it in. Tinkle. You could, but then you couldn't flush it. And surely it smells badly enough in here, even for you. All right, so it won't actually let you use the toilet because, well, it's not hooked up to anything. It literally just flops out onto the floor. What happens if I flush it? Now the toilet drains freely. Well, that's good. Not that good. It hasn't been connected to a water pipe in 34 years. Oh. All right, mental note. So it looks like there's a water pipe up here, so maybe we can somehow get a hose to connect up the... T I am... This, is, this means way too much to me to get the toilet working. Well, there's obviously a big pipe sticking out of it. You know that's what we do. This pipe is clearly marked water, for what that's worth. What a strange sentence. I am picking up so many rads in here. I would love to see Larry in power armor. These barrels were once used to store toxic sludge, but apparently no longer. Well, that's good. Not that good. It's all leaked out onto your floor. Oh. Well, that's enough of that. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's the holds. I forget what we do in there. Let's see. There's the horseshoes competition. So we, let's just, just go ahead and give these a try. All right. Nothing venture, nothing gay. Okay. I don't think I went to the horseshoe competition at all. Otherwise, these are some very interesting looking sentient horseshoes. Uh, hiya, girls. My name's Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer? Laffer? Well, that's a funny little old name. I'll bet you're a funny little old fella, too. Well, gee, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> um, say, don't I know you? Oh, probably. Yeah, you're famous, aren't you? We're the Jugs. My name's Naomi. And this here's my daughter. Why don't you? So, you ever heard our records, Larry? Uh, oh, good. Oh, maybe that's the name of their record, and I won't feel so bad. Uh, sure. Well, let's talk about their music and all. Uh, so yeah, famous country duet, I think. Uh, why don't you, uh, no, this is Naomi and Why Don't You Judd, which is, I think, a play on Naomi and Winona Judd or something like that. I don't even know. I don't listen to country music very much. So, um, what kind of music do you sing? Both kinds. Country and Western. Ass-kicking country western. Why don't ya? We don't use that kind of language no more. Sorry, mama. But kicking. Now see, was that so hard? You probably know our big hit. Big hair and tangled limbs. Uh, well, it, it doesn't ring a bell. What about, I got my panties round my ankles and pain round my heart? You know that one, don't you? Uh, it sure sounds like a Grammy winner. Oh, hon, it is. It is. When we finish that, there ain't a dry eye in the house. So just what kind of music do you listen to, anyway? Disco. Ka-chunk, ka-chunk. You know, some folks say it's coming back. Oh, I don't. But, see, I say it never left. You are a funny little fella. Do you have any recordings I could listen to? You know, I'd love to give you an autographed copy of our latest CD. This jug's for you. But we left for this cruise in such a hurry, we only had time to grab a few lacy nothings off in the bus. Oh, that's okay. I far prefer the superior fidelity of 8-track. Say, you are a funny little feller. All right, well, this is getting us nowhere. So let's learn a little bit more about the jugs. Now, I think... Um, while Larry is sort of out to, uh, get himself some company for the cruise, as it were, it's not as overt in this game. So I think you actually, like, talk to the person, you help them out, and then I think they actually make their own solo decisions. Like, hey, we should get to know each other a little bit better, which I admire in a way. Why are you guys on the cruise anyway? So why are a couple of famous singers like you taking a cruise? 
Well, to be honest, Larry, fame can be a curse as well as a blessing. All that touring was just a wearing us out. Not to mention the fact that we can't show our faces in public again until the heat's off. Why don't you hush your mouth? Well, we know we gotta dig deeper into that. What do you mean, till the heat's off? Oh, there was an unpleasant little inside end about a month ago. We was doing a benefit at a maximum security women's correctional facility. We was trying to give our poor sisters a chance to forget their troubles. It's always for the fans. Don't you know? That, and our manager said it'd be a cheap way to shoot our new cable special, Caged Heat, Jugs Behind Bars. Why don't you? Who's telling the story anyway? Anyway, turns out that day we had a little trouble of fitting into our spandex costumes. See, Mama had been hitting them tour bus donuts again. Why don't you shush? Anyhow, you know, the show must go on. So I just had one of our roadies spray us down with some silicone lubricant. I got some of that. And we just slid right in. Hmm. Well, now, there's an interesting image. <sighs> Anyhow, we had no idea those hot stage lights would trigger a chemical reaction between the spandex and that silicone lubricant. Hoo-hoo-wee! That was something. It did cause a commotion. Oh, yeah. So, what happened? It's all kind of just a blur now. Let's just say after that, everywhere we went, we was accosted by tabloid photographers. <laughs> we was mobbed. And once they aired that videotape on A Nashville Affair, well, we just had to lay low for a while. So, here we are, just a soaking up some rays and a kicking back. Interesting. Okay, so there's a subtle little hint that uh, heat plus the silicone lubricant that I have triggers some sort of uh, Spanish fly-esque kind of arousal syndrome. Interesting. Or maybe the spandex might have something to do with it. So why do you wear spandex outfits if it caused you so much grief? For the fans, don't you know? Yep, it's always for the fans. And because it's mild corseting action keeps mama out of them full fragured sizes. Why don't you? That'll be enough. I love their dynamic. I think they're a mother and daughter. I'm I'm 99% certain. Oh, well, I can ask right here. Now, um, let's see. I've uh, kind of forgotten. Which of you is the mother and which is the daughter? Oh, shucks, Larry. Ain't you the little flatterer? I'm why don't she's mama. Don't Did you have her when you were like seven? Of course, we are dang near the same age. I had her on my first ovulation. Heck yeah, I'm 19, and mama's been 29 for at least five years. Why don't you? You are not funny. All right, so 35 and 19. Though, yeah, they do look fairly similar, but I do see a little bit more maturity in her face. I notice you both have really large um, hairstyles. Yeah, you like them? Well, they're sure, uh, big. How do you get them that way? Now, Larry, that's a little old show be a secret. To get it really big, I like to hang upside down. Why don't you stop? And to keep the hairspray from sticking to your outfit, you just about gotta be buck naked. That's about enough, why don't you? That's actually too much, but uh, thanks for sharing. Anytime. Yeah, you can continue that story if you like. All right, Larry, let's go ahead and put on your best pickup line. Go for it. Hi, my name's Bill Gates. Ah, couldn't be. You're too geeky. Oh. Slam dunk score. <laughs> Poor Bill, never gets any love. Well, yeah, we do. He's great. You two must be performing here on the cruise. We weren't gonna at first. See, we're on vacation, don't you know? Yeah, we was just wanting a break. From the pressures of fame. But our manager insists we keep our act tight. So we decided to do one special show. For the fans, don't you know? God love them. The, the, the consummate professionals, these two. I mean, laying low until the heat's off of whatever kind of oddness happened uh, to put them into the tabloids chilling out. They weren't going to do a show, but they love their fans so much that they're going to do a show even while they're on their vacation. Good on you, you guys. Okay, so remember that you're here. I don't think they ever move from this spot until it's showtime. And it's not showtime until we say it is. 
Well, it's been nice chatting with you. Be sure you catch our show in the lounge tonight. Y'all come back now, here. I also like how when you hit the shortcut button, the right, it just defaults to the map, so it's just right, left. Love it. That's good design. All right, so here's where he meant to be in before dilds. Yeah, baby. All right, got him. I also realized, also just as a, I always get sidetracked, I'm sorry, but the function keys. <laughs> yeah, they're back again. So we got the tinklies. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. I love it. Yeah, they got that. That fart. <laughs> love it. And then there's the flush. And then there's my personal favorite, which is like some sort of fart storm. It's like winds blowing across the plains as far I don't know. I love it though. All right, so how do we play? Be careful not to walk there when someone is throwing horseshoes. Thanks for the warning, Neil. That's oh, all right. Play. First, insert your Thiesman Trophy scorecard in the card reader. Where's the card reader? He said, knowing full well where the hell it was. This fiberglass centaur hides the Thiesman Trophy card reader. Simply insert your scorecard in his slot to begin. The system verifies your eligibility with the ship central competition computer, then automatically scores and tabulates your efforts. Pretty doggone impressive. Especially considering it's still running on a Commodore 64. Is that even possible? How is Commodore 64 going to be networked into anything? Could you do that? I don't even know. All right, well, let's get it over with. There's the card slot. Insert your Thiesman trophy scorecard into this slot whenever you're ready to compete. Uh, I hate it. All right, go ahead. Yeah, even Larry's not quite ready for this. Oh, it dispenses, oh, I get it, that's cute. Okay, oh look, there's his little kumquats. All right, Larry, I have every faith in you. Come on, this is a game that was made in the 70s. You can do, well, it was probably made earlier than that, but come on, Larry. Ale. Whoop. Sorry. That was typical. Ale. But. <laughs> <laughs> that was mediocre. <laughs> Threw it off the ship. Love it. <laughs> uh, I hope that's my card. All right. Well, let's see how we did. I have a feeling that we bombed it. Your attention, please. Following a successful all-night rewiring, the Love Master 2000 is once again open and ready for love. Did you say the Love Master 2000? You know, there's my one. Love Master 2000. What is that? They just fixed it, so let's go. Cybersmith 2000. I'm glad I don't smell that. That probably smells like lube. That's awful. What is going on in here? First of all, hello. Yeah, baby. So, the Love Master 2000, I think... I don't know how it works, but it basically rates your sexual prowess, I guess? So there are people in there just basically just sort of humping a robot, and you know we gotta get in on that. Let's go. Let's see how these guys are doing. Maybe we can get some pointers. This booth is occupied, and evidently quite successfully, too. I don't know. Score is only 180. Well, it's 186 in climbing, 606. Oh man, okay, he has just gone full on Rage Hulk. There are many governments that ban that sort of behavior. Yet he goes full Hulk, Hulk and he's got the lowest score out of any of these people, and yet this mermaid is really doing the ticket. What the hell is going on in there? They're about to max out the machine, uh, 840. Okay, I guess it's gonna stop there. How am, I don't know how I'm gonna beat this. All right, uh, <laughs> beat that. It's masturbatory joke. All right, let's go for it. Knowing that I can do this as many times as necessary until I win, I can at least, uh, hey, um, Larry. D uh, he's like, when in Rome. All right, hey, robot, let's do it. Oh, yes. <laughs> hey, two, oh, wow. Okay, this is just one of the many services this cruise provides. I bet I was in there an hour. Your score, Larry Laffer. Two. 
Well, great. Okay, so I failed at horseshoes, love, and being dressed. I am off to a fantastic start. Uh, well, let's take a look around here, because this place is very curious. Love Master 2000 is not a registered trademark of up-and-coming productions of Sierra Northwest, a division of Sierra Publishing, a part of Sierra Online Incorporated, a member of CUC International, a company publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol CU. All rights reserved. Your mileage may vary. Your marriage may vary. What's this button do? This button is clearly labeled, Do Not Touch. So, naturally, your curiosity is peaked. Uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna hesitate. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Never been as sure as anything in my life. What happened? Oh, that's what it did. Okay, so now there's a gigantic, like, six-story lava lamp in the atrium. Showing off images of, is that a chicken at the piano? When Lefty takes a break, his... Pecker entertains the crowds. Got it. All right, game. Don't lose me here. We were doing so well. All right, what else can I do? Let's go down and do... Oh, we can check out the casino. All right, so we'll try the craps tournament. We got to do that. Oh, it looks like every single James Bond in existence is here chilling out at the craps table. Martini. Shaking. Yeah, could I get a little bean dip over here? Thanks, baby. You're great. Now, while that does sound kind of random, not the martini thing, but the bean dip thing is a clue on how we need to progress. But we'll we'll see. But first, this place is fascinating. And also, first, hey, Adilds. Yeah, baby. Well, first, my attention is drawn to the Carcano. I love it. The Paradise Casino has chosen a unique way to display the grand prize in the progressive slot machine challenge. Carcano. That can't be good for the other carriage, but in the uh, in its defense, it's going to be very clean. Can we play the slot machines? Those slots just remind you of the slots back in Lost Wages, as chronicled in Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of the Lounge Lizards. Available everywhere that stores wrap your purchase in plain brown paper. Let's win ourselves a car, baby. You have no desire to play the slots now. You had your fill of slot machines in Leisure Suit Larry in the land of the lounge lizards. Plug coming. Available by mail order directly from Sierra if you borrow your parents' credit card. Oh, sneaky, sneaky. Well, I can't use this craps table because it's packed, but maybe I can use this. No, I can't use this craps table. How about this one? Nope, not letting me. All right, this is the only way I can play craps because they only have one croupier in the entire cruise staff. You've wanted to play craps ever since you visited Lost Wages, way back in Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of the Lounge Lizards. Plug. Just one of the many great games available in Sierra's handsome collector's edition, Leisure Suit Larry's Greatest Hits and Misses. Available wherever fine software is re shrink wrapped in the back room, even though they never admit that's what they do. Yeah, too bad the table's full. Don't you guys have a home? Guess not. Oh, I think he's trying to get them to leave. Okay. Oh, and it plays the James Bond theme sort of in the background. Cute. Excuse me. No talking, monsieur. Game in progress. All right. Well, they're on a roll, so there's no way I'm getting anywhere near that table. So these are the four Bonds. I'm, I think this... I can't really point them out. I can't tell which ones is which, because I've always thought that this one was Connery, but... This one looks more Connery-esque, and then, uh, I don't know, you guys Your figure attention. it out. Hmm. Well, the only place we can go here, I think we can go down this hallway, if we go down this escalator. I remember something or other down here. I say I think, and yet, you guys know I had this game memorized like a back of my hand. Hmm, alright, this looks pretty high security. Up. Oh. Uh, everything's fine. Everything is under control. Please don't beat me. Ha, ha, ha. I love this room. I love everything this room stands for. Because you, you pass by and like here's a employees only door. Intense security is this door's hallmark. To its left is a key card scanner, a retinal scanner, a fingerprint scanner, a voice print scanner, a tongue print scanner, and an auto DNA sampler. Something tells you it would be better for you to pass all those tests than to fail any one. 
All right, so this looks like the whole of the quest line. So we got to get someone's DNA. We got to steal someone's fingerprints. We got to steal someone's tongue. We have to steal someone's eyes. We got to get someone's voice. It would probably just be easier if someone could just let us in. I know this guy. Oh, these are all former winners. Cute. Yeah, they put these portraits down here to kind of get everybody into wanting to win the trophy themselves. And it's down here where nobody can see them. Jeez, if guys like that can win this contest, how hard can it be? In your case, not that hard. Was that a dick joke? Oh, speaking of what, that crossbow was pointed right at my phallus. All right, let's take a look at this. How are we going to beat it? Place your eye before this miniature scanner and your retina will be recorded, analyzed and processed by the ship's central computer, and compared to an international database of retinal scans via a cellular link with the CIA website. You better hope yours matches. Let's give it a try. Don't do that. That would mean instant death. Besides, you could put an eye out. Don't do that. That would mean instant death. Besides, you don't know where that tongue has been. Don't do that. That would mean instant death. Besides, you don't know where that finger's been. Don't do that. That would mean instant death. Besides, look where that port is located. You'd have to unzip first. Uh, is that a challenge? Challenge accepted. You'd prefer to wait for a more opportune time to do that. Oh, fine. Let's just open the door. What? You think you can just ignore all these defense mechanisms and waltz right in just by pushing the door open? As a matter of fact, I do. Hey, look. The door doesn't quite latch. I can just walk right in. Okay. It's your ass. And th that's it. It's like all of those security measures mean nothing. It tries to scare you away from a door that does not even close. I I don't know. Something about that. I just love it. Hey, Dilds. Yeah, baby. So here we are in the employee break room. Oh, oh man, they get their own foosball table. So nice. In your salad days, you enjoyed a good game of foosball. Well, these are my salad days. Let's go, my friend. You don't have the balls. Hey, that was harsh. I'm not referring to cojones, clown. The foosball is missing. Oh, <laughs> I see. It's got to be really hard to play foosball or pool or anything on a boat because the boat's rocking back and forth. It's got to screw everything up. And these, I just noticed, look like little tiny... Soccer players? <laughs> Penises. All right, let's steal this place blind. Uh, what's up here? There are several notices posted on the employee's bulletin board, along with photographs of gamblers no longer permitted in the casino. Which are all Sierra employees, which I like. Attention dealers. Special seminar. Dealing from the bottom of the deck made easy. Saturday, 3 a.m., Ship's Lounge. Pit bosses. If they can't take a joke, bar them. A jumper wire with alligator clips at each end is tacked to the bulletin board. A sign beside it reads, Attention pit bosses. Attach this wire to slot machines to prevent jackpots. Oh, that is... Oh, I'll just be taking that. Thank you very much. No cheating for you. Sure, you can take the jumper wire, but why would you ever want to prevent a jackpot? I don't know. Knowing how this game operates, there'll be some... Ooh, coffee. Oh, yeah, I could do some coffee right about now. You'd rather drink rancid bog scum. Uh, I guess it's been there for a while. What's this tube? KZ brand jelly. This tube of KZ brand sexual lubricant and roulette wheel polish has barely been used. Roulette wheel polish. Adorable. Mine. You never know when you might find a... Beautiful babe in need of... A roulette wheel that needs polishing. Oh. <laughs> no. 
Well, I think that'll do for now. We kind of padded our inventory nice and well. We met the jugs. We failed two more competitions. Larry is well on his way to super ultra mega startups. So and next time, I think we need to investigate these lockers over here. Maybe we can hack our way into them somehow or another, but that'll save for next time as we explore the ship. <gasps> At least this is Larry Love for Sale. And as always, good night, jelly beans. Good night.